All right, so good evening. Welcome back. Monday Night Law making a uh, a return. Uh, it's been a long time. I've had uh, new developments, uh, new cases, new sets of cases, new types of cases. So everything's been kind of crazy, but uh, my name is AJ Richman, uh, georgiacrime.com. I am a criminal defense and personal injury attorney. Um, so I thank everybody for joining me. Um, as most of you know, several years ago, we, we had Monday Night Law uh, pretty much every week, um, which was a great thing. And I bring you topics, things to talk about in the law, questions you had, and sometimes just a, a, a question and answer for the entire mm -hmm. night. Uh, so we're going to do that um, tonight as well. Um, but I want to talk about something that uh, I previously posted about on my YouTube page, uh, which was the investigation into the Georgia prison system uh, by the Department of Justice. So the Department of Justice is sort of the executive wing. They're filled with United States attorneys. And most of the time they seek to put people in jail and prison, um, things like that. Uh, but they have a unit of uh, in their division called the United uh, United States Department of Justice Civil Rights Division. And the Civil Rights Division essentially is tasked for making sure that the jails, uh, courtrooms, uh, clients, defendants, they're making sure that they don't lose their constitutional rights simply because they were uh, arrested uh, or put in jail or put in prison. So uh, I made a, about an hour post on it on my YouTube page, but they, the Department of Justice has said that the Georgia prison systems, the Georgia prison systems are basically a dump. They are a death camp and they, uh, they are putting people in jail and the people that they're putting in jail are lying. I'm sorry, are dying. Uh, they're probably lying too, but they're also dying and they're dying at a very high rate. They're dying more than pretty much any other state, uh, in, uh, America, uh, per capita. Um, they're being injured. They're being sexually assaulted. They're being physically assaulted. Um, so what has transpired after that was the Fulton County jail, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, has come out, or the Department of Justice has come out with a scathing recommendation that uh, essentially says your your jail your jail sucks, uh, and people die in there. So there's a difference between a jail and a prison, right? A prison is if you commit a felony offense, um, you go to prison for punishment. If you commit a misdemeanor offense, sometimes a felony, but mainly misdemeanors. Uh, or you're being held for court while on bond, or you don't have a bond, uh, you're held in the local jail. And the local jail here in uh, Fulton County is on Rice Street, and it is one of the worst jails in America, maybe even the worst. So what I want to do today is there was a press conference that came out just the other day um, where the United States Attorney's Office essentially had a press conference about their their report, and I'll link the uh, report below. Report's about 105 pages long. And they, uh, you're gonna hear from the United States Attorney, you're gonna hear from their spokesperson. And I just, I haven't listened to it yet, but I wanna walk through it together. I wanna listen to it together. Um, and I wanna hear what they have to say about it um, in real time with my opinions. And of course, if, if anyone has a question um, uh, or um, simply just, wants to say something about Fulton County, um, you can just post it in the link and um, post it in the chat and I can call it out and you can um, you can be heard and be seen. So without further ado, um, let's go ahead and get right into the press conference.
Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kristen Clark, Assistant Attorney General for the Civil Rights Division at the U.S. Department of Justice. Uh, joining me is Ryan Buchanan, U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of Georgia. The Justice Department has completed a comprehensive investigation into conditions at the Fulton County Jail here in Fulton County, Georgia. Our investigation finds longstanding unconstitutional, unlawful, and dangerous conditions that jeopardize the lives and well-being of the people held there. We cannot turn a blind eye to the inhumane, violent, and hazardous conditions that people are subjected to inside the Fulton County Jail. Detention in the Fulton County Jail has amounted to a death sentence for dozens of people who have been murdered. Death sentence. You know, I had a plea the other day, and I told the judge that um, it was a death sentence to if you sentence this particular person to jail. And... Uh, I guess the judge didn't believe me, um, but here you are, United States Attorney's Office saying it is a death sentence. Murdered or who died as a result of the atrocious conditions inside the facility. It's not just adults, but also young people who are subjected to conditions and treatment that violate the constitution and defy federal law. Many people held in jails in our country have not been convicted. They are awaiting hearings, trial dates, or are serving short sentences for misdemeanors. We find that the Fulton County Jail does not adequately protect incarcerated people from violence, such as stabbing, sexual abuse, or even murder. Physical deficiencies in the environment, such as unlocked doors and large holes in the walls, permit and even facilitate the brutality. Incarcerated people use makeshift weapons built out of jail. Keep in mind, the jail, uh, most of them are filled with uh, people that haven't even gone to court yet, that haven't even had their case tried yet, and by law are presumed innocent. And they're subjected to physical violence and sexual violence. F fixtures to attack others, including vulnerable people with mental health needs and 17-year-old young people. In 2023 alone, we identified 314 stabbings and more than 1,000 assaults. This rate of violence exceeds what we've seen in other cities across the country. The Fulton County Jail had as many stabbings in a single month as the Miami-Dade County Jail had all year. And that's a facility with one and a half times more people. Since 2022, six people in the jail have lost their lives to violence. Six people in the jail, presumed innocent, not convicted of a crime. They're probably because they can't post bond or are awaiting trial in other jurisdiction dead. I'll walk through additional court findings set forth in the report that we're issuing today. Living conditions at the jail are hazardous and unsanitary. Housing units are flooded from broken toilets. Roaches, rodents, and pests abound. Standing water, exposed wiring, and vermin make living areas unsafe. The jail does not provide enough food, leaving people severely malnourished. The jail fails to provide constitutionally adequate medical and mental health care to people at the jail, exposing people to preventable bad outcomes, including injury, seriousness, illness, pain and suffering, mental health decline, and even death. The lack of security staff and failure to prioritize health services impede access to care. Medical emergencies do not receive appropriate medical responses. People at risk of suicide do not receive sufficient protection, and people with serious mental health needs do not receive adequate treatment. The jail uses solitary confinement, also known as restrictive housing, in discriminatory and unconstitutional ways that expose people, particularly 17-year-olds and people with mental health disabilities, to risk of harm, including acute mental illness and self-injury. All right, so they're putting... 17 specifically 17 year olds which in georgia is an adult under the law very few states have what we have but in georgia a 17 year old is considered a an adult for criminal cases so they're putting there they there are known problems by putting 17 year olds in solitary confinement so think of solitary confinement as uh a nine a nine by nine square cell with just a bed and a toilet and that's it just that a nine by nine and the door to the cell is cement and there is probably a three inch glass 
that go on the top that you can sort of see out and a little slot on the bottom. That's it. That's solitary confinement. So they're putting 17 year olds in there for whatever reason. Um, they're going to say to keep them safe, uh, but that doesn't keep them safe. And they're putting people with the, who already have mental health problems in solitary confinement, which will give them more mental health problems. And if you don't believe me, go lock yourself in your closet for 15 hours and tell me what happens to you. The jail uses lengthy confinement in restrictive housing as punishment without written explanation, which violates due process. As Georgia is one of only four states where the juvenile justice system's jurisdiction ends at 16, there are 17-year-old boys and girls also held at the jail. And these 17-year-old boys and girls are exposed to particular harm. The jail does not provide special educational services to 17-year-olds uh, who are entitled to them under a federal law known as the individuals. With so they're violating federal law. The jailers are violating federal law. The Disabilities Education Act. It fails to protect these children from violence, including sexual abuse, and it uses isolation to punish them, which both violates their rights and contradicts clear research that such isolation uniquely harms our young people. The jail staff also uses excessive force. This includes deploying tasers without reasonable cause. For example, detention officers tased a man after he said he felt like hurting himself and needed to see a mental health specialist. Such violations stem from understaffing, poor policies, and lack of training and supervisory failures. The summary that I have just shared is harrowing enough, but individual experiences are gut-wrenching. For example, LaShawn Thompson, a black man with serious mental illness, entered the jail on low-level charges and was confined to the mental, housing, uh, mental health housing unit. Three months later, staff found him dead in his cell, infested with lice, and as a medical examiner concluded, neglected to death. Bro. Several months before that, another Bro. black man with serious mental illness died after he stopped taking his medication. Two more black men with mental health disabilities were murdered by their cellmates. Weeks after we opened our investigation, six more black men died at the jail. All of this is a racial justice issue. 91% of the people living in these abhorrent unconstitutional conditions are black, as compared to 45% of Fulton County's overall population. It's also important to note that the vast majority of the approximately 2,000 people held at the jail have not been convicted of a crime. They are awaiting hearings and have yet to be tried, many of them. They're also a majority of people, the, the majority of people in the jail are not convicted of a crime. Like, and the judges, you know, you know we're just going to keep you there. The prosecutors, we're just going to keep you there. The jailers, you have a chance of dying by sitting in this jail. This sickening. Significant number of people with mental health disabilities. During our investigation, we worked closely with correctional, medical, mental health, and educational experts. We physically inspected the jail and observed housing units. We visited medical and mental health service areas. We reviewed thousands of pages of documents and interviewed dozens of jail staff and leadership. And we listened to the people held inside the jail and their advocates and their family members. We thank officials for their cooperation, and we thank all of those who provided valuable information and whose advocacy predates this investigation. I'll note that officials have taken preliminary steps to improve conditions, but they simply are not enough. We hope our findings report sounds an alarm that will prompt the Fulton County Board of Commissioners and the Sheriff's Office to swiftly implement the comprehensive reforms necessary to ensure constitutional conditions going forward. At the end of the day, People do not abandon their civil and constitutional rights at the jailhouse door. Jails and prisons across the country must protect people from the kind of gross violations and unconstitutional conditions that we have uncovered here. I'll now turn the floor over to U.S. Attorney Buchanan. All right. So in my opinion, every single person in the jail should get a bond. There shouldn't be a single person, a single client, a single man, woman, anything that's in the jail with no bond. And if the judge is giving the no bond, if they're like, look, you should, you know, shame on them. The next guy up is a guy named Ryan Buchanan. He's uh, He was elevated and appointed to the United States uh, Attorney's Office here in Georgia 
Um, I haven't had any cases with him, uh, but um, from what I see, especially with this interview, he seems to care uh, about um, people in jail unconstitutional. Good afternoon. He was appointed recently by Joe Biden. I'm Ryan Buchanan, and I'm the United States Attorney here in the Northern District of Georgia. 1974, Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall wrote, when the prison gates slam behind an inmate, he does not lose his human quality. His mind does not become closed to ideas. His yearning for self-respect does not end, nor is his quest for self-realization concluded. 50 years later, our comprehensive investigation into the conditions of confinement at the Fulton County Jail has at its basic level revealed that the men and women and young people who found, find themselves housed at the jail are often left to wonder whether their humanity remained intact once they crossed the threshold of the jail facilities. Where, whether at the main jail, which is known to many in our community as Rice Street, or at its annex facilities, people in custody in Fulton County who are accused of crimes or awaiting formal charges or trials must protect. So just on that note, Fulton County, the Fulton County jail system has what's called annex jails. So think of it as city jails in different places. So we have one in Alpharetta. Um, I actually represented uh, a, uh, a police officer. Um, there was an issue at the jail and the police officer was accused of committing a crime um, against uh, this particular subject, this particular uh, jailer or jailee or inmate. Um, and he, he wasn't involved with it. His name was just brought up as he was part of the, the 15 people that, that um, were there. Um, but the person that was involved was criminally charged um, at the grand jury and uh, sentenced. Um, so they got the person. And that particular uh, defendant was a Fulton County deputy sheriff jailer. ...themselves from brutal physical attacks by other detainees, subject, subjected to frequent excessive force, manage their well-being with inadequate food and unsanitary living conditions, and hope that they can find access to a strained medical and mental health care program. The most obvious casualties of the civil rights violations occurring in the jail are those who leave the jail in body bags. But our investigation has... Bro, leaving the jail in body bags, right? I mean... This is a Fulton County. Like you could be driving in Sandy Springs and Alpharetta and Dunwoody. Like, I mean, anywhere in Fulton County. But you think it won't happen to you? You think, oh, I'm not going to the Fulton County Jail? Yeah. Go do a DUI on 400. Go racing on 400. Uh, uh, commit a, a, get into a fight at a local bar, right? Just do something just dumb. Just somewhat criminal and you will find yourself in the fulton county jail for one two or three days revealed hundreds more injured traumatized and dehumanized people all of whom are just as deserving of the protections of the constitution as all of us in this room since we announced our investigation in july of 2023 the united states attorney's office for the northern district of georgia and the civil rights division of the department of justice have worked diligently to meet our shared mission, to advance the public safety, to uphold the rule of law, and to protect civil rights. There is no greater example of this mission at work than protecting and vindicating the rights of those who are under the custody and control of jail authorities, who themselves are duty bound to protect the public and those in their custody. We began our investigation after LaShawn Thompson was found in his cell, neglected to death, covered in lice. But in the time since his death, several more young men detained in the jail had died, and many died violent deaths. Our investigation revealed unacceptably high incidents of assaults and stabbings, and in some cases, most disturbingly, jail staff witnessed and allowed the attacks without intervention. 2023 alone, there were over 1,000 assaults and more than 300 stabbings in the Fulton County Jail. It outpaces the rate of, of similar assaults in other major city jails almost two to one. Those numbers only reflect the reported attacks. Many detainees told our team that they explained that they feared for their safety. They were reported that they had been stabbed or assaulted. 
One such detainee was left untreated for multiple stab wounds for a week until our team alerted the jail of his injuries. Also unaccounted for in these disturbing numbers. Left in the jail for a week after being stabbed and it took the United States Attorney's Office to let the Sheriff's Office know, hey, you need to fix this problem. Are numerous allegations of violent rape, sexual assault, and harassment. The crisis of violence in the Fulton County Jail has resulted in part because of the lack of effective classification and housing planning, which allows for extremely violent individuals and gang members to be housed with vulnerable and low-risk individuals. And particularly, vulnerable individuals are most subject to violence in the jail, including people with serious mental illness, gay and transgender detainees, and 17-year-olds. In addition, the Fulton County Jail employs too few guards relative to the number of detainees to keep people safe, and poor maintenance of, ba of basic fixtures allows violence to go unchecked. But numbers aside, jail staff are often unaware of violence because they conduct inadequate security rounds. We uncovered incidents where hours or even days passed before victims of assaults were discovered by staff. In one shocking case, while an officer sat in an observation tower, a man was killed with his hands and his feet bound, not found until his body was extremely cold. Additionally, hundreds of broken light fixtures and cell doors allow violent detainees to move about at will. They killed people? Inmates killed people and then hid the bodies? and the jail couldn't find them. Like, don't they every, I don't know, hour say, hey, you know, let's line up, make sure everybody's there. But this guy's dead body was just found a week later. In the shadows, and sometimes through the very walls of the facility. Equally alarming, men and women in the Fulton County Jail also experience violence from the staff. Our investigation showed the crisis of violence the lack of security at the Fulton County Jail is paired with staff that resort to the use of force too quickly and too often. We found that staff were regularly deploying tasers and pepper spray without any warning and for minor rule infractions like failing to hang up a phone quickly enough, yelling, or not putting items away as instructed. The rampant use of tasers is particularly disturbing. The risk of cavalier deployment of tasers is not just the temporary pain of electrocution. Detainees have been hospitalized for serious injuries caused by probes that are embedded in sensitive parts of the body, like the neck and even in the bone. The excessive use of force in the jail is not confined to a few bad actors. Officers lack policy and training guidance on whether and when force is appropriate, and when officers cross the line, the jail rarely holds them to account. In some cases, the policy is glaringly inconsistent with established use of force techniques. Written policies explicitly state that staff may deploy their tasers against suicidal or emotionally disturbed persons without any assessment of danger to themselves or to others. Staff are permitted to use force when a person interrupts their work. And the use of force reports and supervisor reviews bear this out. Supervisors rarely assess a need for the use of force if they do it at all. Perhaps most concerning, our investigation showed that even when the jail determines that an officer use excessive force, discipline is virtually non-existent. Those officers go back to their jobs to repeat the same conduct. Aside, aside from the glare. So if, if an officer uses excessive force, they don't get in trouble. That's what, that's what the report finds is happening in Fulton County Jail. During risk of violence, detainees face insidious threat of unsafe living conditions, constant exposure to rodents and pests, and an unsettling disregard for food safety. Detainees in the Fulton County Jail lack basic necessities, like working toilets and sinks, and are exposed to flooding, standing water, mold, and what can only be described as filth. Pests carrying bacteria and disease not only run rampant in food preparation areas, but have infested the bodies of the people in the jail, people like LaShawn Thompson. Earlier this year, our team was evacuated from a housing unit in the jail because of a lice outbreak. Given the high incidence of violence in the jail, the need for adequate medical and mental health care is critical. But Fulton County Jail has failed to provide constitutionally adequate care to the men, women, and young people in the custody of Fulton County Jail in virtually all respects. For a time, because of the unsafe conditions in the jail, Fulton County's health care provider, NAFCARE, nearly terminated its contract to provide medical and mental health services for fear that their staff would become victims of the dangerous environment 
without proper security escorts. The, the, doctors, lack of security. the doctors and nurses wanted to quit because they felt they were going to be victimized by the inmates. Security left an entire floor of the jail without adequate access to care because it was simply too dangerous for the health care workers to go inside. Medication and treatment are often impeded by flooding in the unit, power outages, and the unavailability of officer escorts. This lack of care in the Fulton County Jail has led to at least 17 non-homicide, non-suicide deaths in 2022 and 2023, a rate that is more than twice the national average since 2019. Holy shit, bro. 17 deaths in a little bit over a year, and that's twice the national average. A detainee who reported chest pain later died of a heart attack. Jail failed to assess a man for rapid weight loss before he died, much like LaShawn Thompson, who died after losing over 30 pounds in three months. These figures likely underreport the true death toll of people who were transferred out of, transported out of the jail to Grady Hospital and died outside of the jail walls. If someone dies in the jail, there's little or no effort by the jail to determine the cause of the, the root cause of their death. Crazy. 75% of the people who have died in Fulton County Jail since 2021 had a current mental health diagnosis or a history of mental illness. Sad. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the mental health treatment options and suicide prevention practices are grossly inadequate in Fulton County Jail. Our team observed firsthand how custody staff deprioritize mental health issues and fail to respond appropriately to concerns. Requests for mental health treatment are delayed or ignored, and mental health staff are simply unable to provide the minimum standard of care for those who need it. Daily medication is often unavailable, and suicidal detainees are often isolated and locked in restrictive housing in lieu of treatment. And when people are released from the Fulton County Jail, they are frequently left without the medication needed to sustain their health, without notice to their families, and sometimes actively experiencing a mental health episode. This is not a recipe for ensuring the safety of these individuals upon release or the safety of our community, and it is constitutionally unacceptable. Finally, I'd like to speak about a population in the Fulton County Jail that many may not know exists, a population of 17-year-old boys and girls. All of the Constitution... Here we go. Talking about 17-year-olds now. Remember, Georgia, I think, is one of only four states that uh, the criminal laws apply to 17 and older. I mean, I get calls every day. Well, my son's only 17. He can't be charged with a crime. Yes, he can in Georgia. He'll be treated the same as a 17-year-old as he would a 55-year-old or a 70-year-old. Same type of crime. Constitutional violations that I've discussed today apply with equal force to the young people housed at Rice Street and the annex facilities. The average stay of a 17-year-old in the Fulton County Jail is 392 days. And that time... The average stay of a 17-year-old in jail is, is, is a year. Um, they are particularly and uniquely at risk for violence, lack of access to mental health care, risk of suicide while in isolation in restrictive housing. During the team's tour of the South Annex, they learned the boys there were held in their cells for 22 hours or more frequently. The girls housed at Rice Street fare no better. And to the extent that these young people require a kind of specialized educational programs that are called for by federal law, they are not getting them. In fact, no educational services of any kind are provided to the 17-year-old detainees in Fulton County. Lock them up. These young people deserve better. We see that our report lays out the bare minimum measures the Fulton County Jail must take to comply with its obligations under the Constitution and federal law. We are appreciative of the cooperation of Fulton County, Fulton County Sheriff thus far, and we look forward to working with them going forward to remedy these civil rights violations in the weeks and months to come. The Northern District of Georgia prioritizes the protection and enforcement of civil rights for our district's most vulnerable residents. We are grateful for the impactful partnership for our colleagues from the Department of Justice's Civil Rights Division. We would not be here today without their collaboration. 2022, uh, when I became U.S. Attorney, uh, we formalized our tradition of civil rights work in this office. It's a tradition that dates back to the very first United States Attorney for the Northern District of Georgia. We did so by formally establishing a public integrity and civil rights section. This talented, 
dedicated team of assistant U.S. attorneys, investigators, paralegals, legal assistants, and even interns are to be commended for this work. This team is comprised of... I think every, every district attorney's office in the state of Georgia should have a public integrity unit. Simple. Every police department has an internal affairs unit. Why don't prosecutors have a public integrity unit? People who are citizens of this district, people who live in Fulton County and work every day in Fulton County. They have spent countless hours in the Fulton County Jail speaking with the men, women, and young people housed at the Fulton County Jail. I'm proud to be their colleague. I'm grateful for their relentless effort in upholding the rule of law, advancing the public safety, and protecting civil rights. That's our mission. We relish the opportunity to fight for the rule of law, for the safety of our citizens, and for the civil rights of every human being who lives in the Northern District of Georgia. We do so because our constitution and our mission mandate equal justice under the law for everyone. Thank you. Good man. What is your recommendation? Appropriate use of restrictive housing to avoid serious risks associated with isolation. So in short, we can fix these problems and we are pleased that Fulton County has pledged to cooperate with us in doing so in the road ahead. Um, we've heard a lot of back and forth between the Fulton County Sheriff and the commissioners about who ultimately is responsible for these. So the rest of these are kind of kind of hard to hear uh, the, the Q&A session, but bottom line is that if you find yourself in the Fulton County Jail, your risk of death or great bodily harm or sexual assault goes up at a rate of, I don't, I don't even know how to quantify, but I would probably say 25 times, you're 25 times more at risk. So obviously we don't want to ever get arrested. And if you get arrested, you want to call me to let, to let me help you through the system. But we all need to make sure that this Department of Justice report telling the Fulton County Sheriff's Office to fix it, right? Fix your jail. Let's hope that the sheriff listens and obeys the commands of the Department of Justice. My name is AJ Richmond. I'm glad to have you with me on, on this uh, Monday night. And we'll be posting again next week. Check out my uh, YouTube page at, at Georgia Crime at G-E-O-R-G-I-A-C-R-I-M-E dot com for more. Take care.